Hi all, Mass Barncup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today we are continuing our adventure down the path of cable TV networks. And today we're taking a look at this. This is the compact EDC segmentable GAN node from Cisco. EGC is short for electronically gain control and GAN is of course referring to the gallium arsenic um, MOSFET technology or FET technology. The whole idea of a unit like this, here you can see the marker, that is to get a segmentable node network where you get your fiber all the way out to the curb or to the building. So this is built to support the FTTC or FTTB topologies of upgrading old cable TV networks to fiber. Now this is of course old and decommissioned, while right now we are running fiber right out into the single houses and premises instead. But uh, let's check it out. It is a nice, very sturdy, weatherproof enclosure. It has this um, hinge, which is slightly offset. So you do not get this where it nags the um, gasket all around here, but you can close the lid and then secure it evenly. Now, if we start out over here in the fiber section, let's just move the unit a bit. That over here we have a fiber splicing cassette, which just is a plastic inlay where you have room for your fibers running through this um, cable feed through. And you can just round it up and you can connect them into these holders here. So you have a nice secure connection and you can run your fibers through this little piece of plastic so you don't yeah, damage them in the hinge. Now over here in the main amplifier and transmitter section, we have our nice dual power supply sitting up here. It's fed via 65 volt AC and it outputs 7 and 24 volt DC through these isolated connectors and an isolated ground into the two dual channel yeah, receiver and transmitter channels we have here. So now since this is a yeah, optical node, we'll see that we have some receiver modules and we have reverse transmitter modules. And then out here we have the coax cable connections. Now a lot of the options are missing here, or at least filters, splitters and fuses. But what we do have here is the one gigahertz optical receiver module. It's much sturdier than what I have seen in some other um, segmentable nodes. Whereas this was just a smaller plastic uh, chassis. Now it seems like it fastens down to the heatsink here. So most likely a much more powerful um, laser module that we have here. So we're going to take that apart um, later on. But other than that, it's pretty self-explanatory as other cable TV and now fiber to the curb units. That uh, it's clearly shown that you have your receivers goes in, you have your splitters, you have your adjustment and attenuation filters optional control module here and it goes down and you can reverse through to the reverse transmitters or you can go to your outputs. Now there are some small nice uh, plastic things here, diplexers and LCI in here is actually the programming interface. It's uh, stated in the manual you can program this with a regular PC and that actually just is a 2.5 millimeter um, mini jack, micro jack so it's obviously some kind of uh, propriety protocol or connection to it. I doubt it's through the sound card they program these. You can also program these over the network, so it is fully remotely configurable and also while running, so you do not disturb any data transfers or voice over IP connections that's established. With all screws removed, let's check out what's underneath the plate here. Okay, that's secured over here. It's just that small plastic thing here, just like that. Away that goes. And what a lovely PCB we have here. That's actually quite a amazing uh, maze view here, amazing maze. No fun intended there. But as you can see, there's actually made room for these sections down through the PCB and it's all ground stitched all around. Wow. That is a much nicer RF layout than I have seen previously in these nodes. This is much more advanced. And that is 
without a doubt the gallium or the GAN power amplifiers that we have out here. Very, very nice PCB. That's that's actually we have to get this out now. We have to take a closer look at this. We also want to check these small diplex filters here. So let's uh, see what's inside those. Okay, so it's just a small lip. Seems like we have some inductors down there. Maybe this is a plug-in filter. Oh yeah, wow, nice. Comes right out. Gold pins, and look at that. Small nice inductors in there. And passives, resistors, capacitance it seems. Very nice little plug-in module. And with a small lid. How nice is that? That was a, quite a few more screws doing by hand than imagined, but let's see if that almost, almost had them all. Oh, something is locking up somewhere. So now it's a screw. And so we have some heat sinking there. But let's just get rid of all those screws now. Always nice with some uh, heat paste going everywhere. But now that's interesting that we on the back side actually have some uh, coaxial rooting here. And we have a uh, what seems to be a ground rooting with lots of uh, noise uh, suppressing uh, ferrite beads going over it as well. So that's just going in daisy chain to all the ground points. Interesting. I don't think I've seen that before. But uh, I'll guess uh, get some uh, high resolution photos of this and we'll take a closer look. But let's just enjoy the front side here as well. That is a spectacular, very custom PCB with all those cutouts and for sure a way of mitigating EMC issues and interference. Very nice layout. Let us do a circuit path walkthrough of the fiber optic receive channel 1. So here we have the optical receiver which receives the yeah, fiber optic cable from the network. And then we can follow it on the lines here out to the cable network which goes to the customer. So let's just uh, turn that overview picture away again and let's go into actual pixel size of this image. So uh, we start off with the really controller of uh, all the measurements and yeah, controlling this all these uh, optical fiber receivers and transmitters which is a Atmel Mega64 microprocessor. But the way it gets interesting is of course up here where the fiber optic receive module connects to jumper 102. From here on it goes up through a switch uh, with a, which is a 5 megahertz to 3 gigahertz switch, the Pico Semi PE4256. We also have a hybrid coupler over here as it can actually couple over between TX1 and TX2 and RX1 and RX2. How that is done in reality, I'm not quite sure. But we can follow the uh, signal line over here, going through a, some adjustable capacitors, so we have a lot of line conditioning. Um, some yeah devices I was not able to identify. Here at the top we have the 5 volt DC power supply. Here we have a PCMI PE. 4204, which is a 75 ohm digital attenuator. And that is simply to uh, adjust this box to where it sits in the network to um, yeah, correct the cable length into the right attenuation on the network. Now this has matching transformers on both sides of it. Uh, on this Skyworks ACA 2402, which is a 22 dB gain push-pull line amplifier. From here on we have another 
PCMI SPDT switch. And as we can notice, um, it can actually bypass the signal around the preamplifier before going down to the power amplifier, which is a Quoro RFCM 2680, which is a 23 dB gain power double module. And then it goes out to the output of the amplifier. The uh, fiber receive module, the one gigahertz optical receiver. But for sure, it's just some kind of expensive um, fiber interface. So we have a fiber going all around down here. It's just a single loop of extra wire. That's pretty um, common in order to, yeah, don't get any pull damage. And let's see, maybe we should zoom in a bit more. We have the receiving part here, going in as two lines, a choke filter. We have some kind of amplifying IC, output filter again, and then all over the way over here to some kind of uh, preamplifier before it being spit out here. So this usually works at some 886, um, 63 megahertz, or is it down to 63 megahertz? And this is a one gigahertz um, yeah, interface. So this is most likely some kind of down sampling down to the operating frequency. So this is a very high throughput interface, which down samples down to the single node here, while as the whole fiber network runs in a much higher speed. Let's get it out and check out the backside. Okay, that was just a uh, standoff here. That's fastening the PCB as well. And yeah, not that exciting on the backside after all. But for sure, the front side here, that is quite a beefy fiber optical receiver, much larger amplifiers that I have seen before.